Hello and welcome to another video. Now today when we think of jelly uh, kinds of desserts, we think of them as children's dessert largely because of the success of brands like Jell-O. Now, um, if you go back a hundred years, um, people were doing a lot of things that were not necessarily children oriented with um, gelatin. These included savory aspects and they included um, uh, sort of more sophisticated, um, sometimes alcohol, including uh, desserts. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and do a wine jelly. This is my own recipe based upon a few different, um, uh, based upon a few different experiments. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, as we go through the ingredients, kind of talk about how they fit together and why I choose the, chose the ingredients I did. The goal isn't for you necessarily to follow my recipe. Uh, though maybe it might be nice as a starting point, but for you to be able to see a um, pattern in which you can use to build your own recipes on this. So this is actually a really nice dessert. Um, it's very sophisticated um, and uh, it's great for entertaining um, small groups of people. Of course, this year that's a little difficult, but hopefully as things return to normal, this will be uh, uh, something that, that, that we can do more of again. So uh, onto the ingredients. So obviously being a wine jelly, we're gonna use a red wine. Um, now I've chosen this Calvé Bordeaux Superior, um, largely because um, it's a relatively high tannin um, wine. Uh, it still has a fair bit of fruit, um, has some fruity notes, but it's not like an extremely fruity red wine. One of the things I found in my experiments is that fruity notes don't come across in the gelatin very well from uh, the wine directly, so we need some help on that. So uh, start with a harsher, um, more tannin-oriented red, um, but pay attention to the specific fruity notes it has because that impacts the choice of juice. Now in this case, this has uh, fruity notes that remind me very much of elderberries, so I got some elderberry uh, nectar, and uh, this will be the primary um, uh, uh, carrier for the gelatin. So we'll cook this, we won't cook the wine. Um, to liven up the flavors, we will add juice of a lemon. Um, obviously, being a dessert, we will add sugar. And note that I start off with a dry red wine. So that makes it a little easier to control the sugar. And finally, to kind of rebalance things a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of grappa. Um, this grappa uh, I just chose because it's what I had. You can probably use just about any brandy, but, uh, but I kind of like the uh, sort of simplicity of the grappa. You could even probably use vodka if you had to. And then finally, we will add one pack of gelatin. I will be serving these in brandy sniffers, um, largely because the uh, profile is similar to a wine glass. Of course, they don't have the stem. Um, and uh, because they're kind of like a nice size and shape for the dessert. So first, I'm going to measure out 150 milliliters of um, this elderberry juice. And... 150 is here. Now, one interesting trick if you have something that's delimited in both um, milliliters and grams of sugar is that the convergence of milliliters to grams of sugar is one to one. So if you have a 150 uh, gram mark, you can use that instead of um, the um, instead of the milliliter mark. Then I'm going to weigh out 50 grams of sugar using the uh,
take a little bit of that off. Perfect. And we'll add the sugar to the elderberry juice. Now, it's worth noting that if you have a wine with a different profile, you could use something like um, you could use something like a uh, like a black currant juice or even maybe a cherry juice. Next, I will juice the lemon, and I'm just going to juice it onto a plate or something. Of course, if you have like um, the, the the lemon juicers with their own saucers, that's fine. Um, and it's fine to have the pulp. There's nothing wrong with that. But we don't want the seeds. So I'm going to review it and remove any seeds before the lemon juice goes in. This doesn't look like it had any seeds. Now I'm going to heat this, stirring it constantly until the sugar dissolves. And I recommend heating this at about a medium. And it doesn't have to get that warm, but once the sugar dissolves, then we'll add the gelatin. And then we'll add the grappa, and then we will start to add the red wine. So I'll come back in about a minute or two once this kind of um, once this kind of uh, starts to dissolve, and we will go forward. So now it's been a couple minutes. This is starting to get just a little warm, and the sugar has dissolved. Therefore, I'm going to add the gelatin. Now, in general, um, this should make it fairly jiggly, but not super uh, firm. If you want it super firm, you could add a second one. But next, we're going to have to stir this in. And this has um, the gelatin needs a bit more warmth to get started. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let it get um, a little bit warmer before I start to stir it, just because. Otherwise, and then I'm going to start with the areas that are not so clumped up, just because otherwise it will stick to the spoon. So we're just going to go ahead and stir this. And eventually it's going to get kind of cloudy, and we'll heat it up until there's no evidence of it. Um, yeah, there we go. We will heat it up until the gelatin appears to have dissolved. And that's not going to take too long. You can see it's already steaming. And I'm only heating this up under medium. You don't want to heat this up too fast because you don't want it to get any hotter than it has to be. So I'm actually going to turn this off now that it's starting to steam. And we will go from there. Scoop around the outside a little bit. Looks like this will mostly come off the outside now. So now it's just a matter of whether we want to get more of it off the spoon, but I think we're pretty good. So from here, I'm going to add, just by eyeball, about a shot or so. Maybe a little more. Doesn't matter that much. Um, here. Then I'm going to measure out 350 milliliters of... Um, Red wine. So that's a quarter of a liter plus a tenth of a liter. So in goes the quarter of a liter. 
I'm going to stir vigorously while I add it. And now the tenth of a liter. Same drill. And here we have the basis for the jelly. Now I'm going to add it to the dessert cups. And uh, this will make, I think, about three portions, maybe a little more. And uh, then I will put them in the refrigerator to set. So an easy way of getting them into the same amount on the dessert cups is to pour it directly into a measuring beaker. And then from there, to pour it into the cup that you want. I'll do that on all of them. Then I'll put them in the refrigerator until they set. It'll be a couple hours and then we'll come back for the taste. And now for the taste test, you can see that this is now gelled. I'm gonna go ahead and take a small taste. The color is kind of like the red wine, but kind of a very nice uh, purplish red. And uh, it should taste pretty good, so. This is very nice. It has the fullness and richness of the red wine, coupled with um, sort of the uh, liveliness that's brought in by the little bit of lemon. Um, I really like this. I think it's a really nice, sophisticated dessert. And uh, I hope you agree. Um, bon appetit, and hope you enjoy this.